A man charged with child abuse and neglect was arraigned in Clark County District Court today. Investigators say the allegations stem from the discovery of nine children living in deplorable conditions. Prosecutors say the couple and their children were living in a house covered in trash and feces. On April 1st, a call is made to 911 from a Karen, a four-month-old in critical condition, police say malnourished and neglected. It's no secret Clark County is in desperate need of good foster parents We had a placement just last year, a baby girl that we got almost straight from the hospital. We loved her, we adored her, and the opportunity arose at the end of that first year for her father to be able to get her back, which was scary for us. But as we got to know him, you really could see that it was a good thing, that they belonged together. They are now part of our family and it doesn't always get to work that way, but what an amazing opportunity and blessing to be able to be part of that story. Even though it was something I wanted to do, I was afraid. I was really afraid that we wouldn't be up to it. We're in our 60s now. We started all over again with young children. The first thing that we did was just go online and Google. We didn't know anybody who had done it. We didn't know anything. And really, if it wasn't for the support of more experienced foster and adoptive families, we wouldn't have been as successful as we've been able to be. When I first moved out here seven years ago, the kids that I had first started working with were all relative placements. So they were living with their grandparents or their great aunt, and they just had questions that I thought would be easy to answer. And so I started doing some research and realizing that kinship care, there was like a gap. A lot of resources are available for foster children under protective custody, but once a child is legally yours, the options are very minimal. The child is the same, the needs are the same, but your support is lacking. Foster change is really exciting because we're going to be able to do big things for kinship, foster, and adoptive families in Clark County. It brings together the resources from Foster Kinship, Fostering Southern Nevada, the Foster and Adoptive Coalition, and Foster Connect. There were so many different wonderful organizations out there, nonprofits, all working. Really, our goals were all the same. And I thought to myself, boy, would it be wonderful if we can all come together, pool our resources, and work together to involve a larger population of the kids under protective custody. When we're harnessing the people behind the organizations and we're all working together, there's incredible synergy that can be created for our community. Kinship families keep kids out of foster care. They keep kids out of the system. I think when kids can't be with their parents, they should be with their family. And if we can equip the family, then maybe we have a chance at breaking that cycle of trauma and abuse and addiction that we see over and over in family systems. These parents, they love their children. Sometimes they were the victims themselves and the pattern repeated itself. One of my children's mothers just felt that she couldn't be the mother that she needed to be. I think it helped in her healing to know that her child was in a safe and loving environment. I think it was a, a tremendous act of love to do what she did. There are a lot of different reasons and a lot of different ways that children enter into care, but all of them are traumatic. What we see in Clark County is a lot of substance abuse, domestic violence, abuse and neglect, parents go to prison. They're not only being removed from their family, from their home that they've known, but oftentimes they're also being removed from their school, from their circle of friends. They lose everything. It's really important that foster changes here for families like mine, like all the families we work with, so that we're able to say, what you're going through isn't abnormal. Here's some resources, here's some support. Caregivers need that to be able to care for kids who've experienced trauma. It's not the same as parenting a child that has not gone through it. It's good to have people who understand that, who have been there before, who have walked that path before. It's just one more way that we can connect families and build support. If you have a little bit of love in your heart, the difference that becoming a foster parent can make in your life is remarkable. There are no words to describe it. Your willingness and ability to love that child, whether it's just for a season or whether it's for 
a lifetime as a member of your family. That's what it's all about. There's such a huge need for foster parents. So if you're interested in fostering, I just can't encourage you enough to at least find out more from the Department of Family Services. Come talk to us. We hope that more people step up if they feel that like even slight. Should I think about it? Yes, think about it. <laughs> This is Peggy's Attic. It is a donation cottage for the Department of Family Services. Everything that you see in here is brought in through the community. Children come out here with their caregivers and they get to go shopping. And there's no money exchanged. Clothing, shoes, toys, every little thing makes such a huge difference in someone's life. Things that sometimes we take for granted is the world to other people. If the community is interested in supporting foster kinship or adoptive parents, Foster Change is a great place to start. We need babysitters. We need child caregivers. If you have money and you're able to support us financially, that goes a long way because we can say, this is what our need is right now. Thank you for your support. We can meet that need immediately. They can come out and do service projects with us. They can come and help at our events. And they could support us through donations. Diapers, formula, new car seats, anything that you'd need to take care of a kid, we can give to a family today. That first hug, that first thank you, that in itself, just the idea of giving to somebody with no conditions attached to it is, is remarkable. These kids are worth it, and if we want to see them thrive and have vibrant futures, we have to invest in them now while they're young. We can't wait till it's too late. Why do I do all this? I do it because I can't think of anything better to do. I have a lot of kids. They're not all in my home, and that's okay. That doesn't mean that we have to stop loving them or that we have to stop caring about them, and I think that they deserve that, right? It's a privilege to do that. <laughs>